Welcome mathematicians. In today's video, we'll be looking at and indeed comparing annuities and perpetuities. So an annuity is a form of investment in which compound interest is earned. So the bank is paying interest on your original investment. And a fixed sum is paid to the investor periodically. Until the value of the investment drops to a zero balance or the investment account is closed. So these are set up often in people's retirements. They will have saved money for many, many years of work, invested what they call a lump sum in the bank, and they gain interest, and they live off that investment during their retirement where they don't have any other income coming in. An annuity eventually runs out. It gets to a zero balance or the person will close the account. Alternatively, you have another investment strategy called a perpetuity. A perpetuity is, in fact, the type of annuity. However, it lasts indefinitely. So the amount of money invested in a perpetuity remains constant. The investment earns interest periodically, so for example, monthly, fortnightly, weekly, and this is paid to the investor at the same period, as in monthly, fortnightly, weekly. So in this scenario, you might have started, say, with an investment of $400,000, and over a month, you might earn $2,500 of interest. So at the end of the month, the person would be paid out that interest of $2,500, meaning the original principle of $400,000 remains constant. It never changes. The word perpetuity is derived from the word perpetual, which means ongoing. So let's look at a scenario. Here we have Richard. He's just started his business at the age of 20, and he plans to retire at the age of 60. So his savings plan. Each fortnight, Richard plans to put $500 into a savings account, the terms of which are as follows. He's going to earn interest of 4.8% per annum, compounded fortnightly. And he's starting with a balance of zero, a principal of zero. Nothing in it. Every fortnight, he's going to put $500 into his savings account for the entire 40 years that he plans to work. So, first question. What will be the value of the investment when Richard reaches his retirement age of 60 years? So we're looking here at using the finance solver. So first of all, let's extract the information. The interest rate is stated as 4.8% per annum. And of course, the finance solver always expects your interest to be in percent per annum. It has a principal of zero, so that goes in. Payments of $500 each fortnight. So $500 is the payment being made. And of course, when you pay money, that goes in as a negative. The payments per year is 26, because it says each fortnight, Richard is paying. The compounding periods per year is 26 because it says that it's compounded fortnightly, 26 fortnights in a year. Now putting in the N, N is the number of payments. So we know that Richard's going to work till the age of 60 and he's currently 20, so that gives us 40 years of payments. However, because we're paying per year fortnightly and compounding per year fortnightly, we have to express our 40 years in a total of fortnights. So 40 lots of 26 gives us 1040 fortnights. That goes in. And of course, here now we have the number of payments, the payments per year, and the compounding periods per year, all in fortnights. They have to match to make this work. We were asked to work out what's the value of the investment. And the unknown, of course, is left a blank in the finance solver. And we put in payment at end as a standard default response. Put all the data in, we press enter, and we get a value of $1,573,242.44, rounded to the nearest cent. It's quite an impressive little nest egg at the end of his working years. So Richard's investment, paying $500 into a savings account at 4.8% per annum, compounded fortnightly over 40 years, will give him an investment $1,573,242.44. Now Richard is faced with some options. Richard's planning to retire at 60. He's considering two investment options, both of which provide him with a monthly payment from which to live. So option one is an annuity option. So he has that principal. He has an interest of 4.4% per annum, compounded monthly, and his payments are monthly. Option two is a perpetuity. The same principal or balance at the start. Interest is the same, 4.4% per annum, compounded monthly, and payments are also monthly. One's an annuity and one's a perpetuity. So let's look at the annuity arrangement. So we've got all our details here in terms of our principal, our interest, rate, our payments. He's planning that he's going to live till 90. It's a bit morbid, but he's got to work out roughly when he thinks he's going to die to ensure that he can get payments up until the age of 90. My question is, what monthly payments will Richard receive? 
He's worked for 40 years, and now from 60 to 90, his planned retirement is 30 years. And this is all compounded monthly, paid monthly. So and the number of payments has to be a month as well. So 30 years by 12 gives me 360 months to be paid. And the number of payments, the payments per year and the compounding periods per year are all in months for this example. The interest rate is 4.4% per annum. And as always, the interest rate for the finance solver is expected to be in percent per annum. The principal is the amount we have, $1,573,242.44. Okay, when you pay money, it goes in as negative. The future value is zero. We're assuming that when he reaches 90, he's used up all the principal plus the interest in terms of the payments he's withdrawn over those 30 years. Okay, so he plans to run out of money at the age of 90. Payments per year is monthly, so that's 12 times a year. The compounding period per year is monthly, that's 12 times a year. And the payment, as always, is at the end. So what monthly payment will Richard receive? The unknown, of course, is left blank in Finance Solve and we press enter. Based on those terms, Richard will receive $7,878.18 every month. A handy sum indeed. Let's look at his option two, his perpetuity. Same amount of money, same principal, same interest rate, compounded monthly as well. But here we're looking at an arrangement where this finance will go ongoing. There is no end to this. Effectively, this will stop when Richard dies. And then he can probably inherit his balance to a family member. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't matter what end we put in because it is the same monthly payments when it's a perpetuity. We're not going down in value. So you can put in N of 1 or N of 100. As a habit, for perpetuities, I put in N equals 1. The interest rate is 4.4% per annum. As always, the interest rate is entered into the calculator as a percent per annum. The principal value, as we've stated, goes in. And again, it's a negative because it's money that's invested into the bank. The future value will remain the same. The payments per year is monthly. So there's 12 of those happening every year. The compounding periods per year is monthly. So there's 12 of those. And the payment is at the end. So to work out the monthly payments received by Richard, of course, we have an unknown blank. And Richard receives $5,768.56. So, which option would Richard choose? Here's his annuity return monthly payments of $7,878.18. Here's his perpetuity return of monthly repayments of $5,768.56. The pros and cons. The pros on the annuity side. He's getting a higher monthly payment, over $2,000 better off with the annuity. That's significant. $2,000 every month. There's a lot of things you can do with $2,000 in a month. The cons. Richard will run out of money at 90. He has no more money left to live on. So if Richard lives on to 95, well, what's he going to do financially? He will have no income. The perpetuity side of things. The pros is that Richard has an ongoing income, no matter what his age. So he can live to 105 and he's still going to have $5,768.56 coming to him as a payment every month. Richard still has a healthy payment of that amount. $5,768.56 each month. And Richard also has a principal of the $1,573,242.44 to either give as an inheritance or maybe to donate to a volunteer group. The con side is that he has a lower monthly repayment. Okay, He's about $2,000 less per month than what he was with his annuity arrangement. So the answer is it's up to Richard which option he would choose. My question for you is, what would you do? Let's investigate a couple of change-ups to this situation. Change-up number one, what amount would Richard have to save each fortnight whilst working in order to receive $8,000 a month when retired if he chose the 30-year annuity? Let's look at this visually. So for the first 40 years, Richard will be investing his savings to earn a lump sum that he can retire from. So here's our original investment conditions that we've studied previously. We have 30 years by 26 fortnights gives us 1,040 fortnights. We have our interest rate of 4.8% per annum, compounding fortnightly and payments per year fortnightly, where the payments are going to be $500. This will give us, at the end of 40 years of investment, $1,573,242.44. The remainder of this time, the next 30 years until the age of 90, Richard will be living off that amount so there's a direct connection here. The amount of money that he has at the end, the future value of his 40 years of investment, becomes the amount of money we start for our annuity for the next 30 years as the principal. 
So that's the $1,573,242.44. And we've already found that that would present Richard with monthly payments of $7,878.18. So now let's work backwards from the annuity end. In the final 30 years, he wants to receive an amount of $8,000 per month. So at the moment, we don't know what principal he requires at the commencement of that 30-year period. How much does he need to actually have saved over the first 40 years in order to earn payments of $8,000 each month? So there's a connection between the principal value that we're going to start the final 30 years of the annuity and the future value at the end of the 40 year of savings. This is our change up scenario. So when we crunch the numbers on the TI Inspire, we find the new principal value required for the annuity to pay out $8,000 a month will be $1,597,568.79. That is the commencement principal value of the annuity for 30 years, and also that is the final value of the savings after 40 years. Then of course we can fill that in and go back to the payment and what we find is that Richard would have to save $507.73 each fortnight whilst he's saving in order to receive $8,000 a month when retired from his annuity. Change up number two. What interest rate compounded fortnightly would Richard require whilst working in order to receive $8,000 a month when retired if he chose the perpetuity option? We have savings from the age of 20 to 60, which represents 40 years. And there's our initial terms that we've looked before, and we find that at the end of the 40-year period of savings, again, he has a balance of $1,573,242.44. The perpetuity has no end. It's ongoing. And it would end up having a payment of $5,768.56. This is our initial calculation that we've already made. And of course, there's a connection that the final value of the savings after 40 years becomes the principal or the initial value of the perpetuity. That was our original scenario. Our new scenario is what interest rate during the savings component of Richard's investment is required to allow him to have a payment at $8,000 per month from his perpetuity. So if we put in the $8,000 a month, we need to know what the principal value was in order to get our $8,000 per month. Now that principal value will be equal to the future value at the end of the 40 years of just savings. We have a problem though. I've got the principal value and the future value are obviously exactly the same for perpetuity, but because the principal value is unknown, so is the future value. Here's our change up scenario that we're looking at. Unfortunately, you can't have two unknowns in the finance solver at once. So we've got unknown one, the principal value, unknown to the future value. So how do we solve this? The answer is we approach this as an equation. We abandon the finance solver and we go to the traditional equation approach. So V0 is our original, our principal value. D is the payment of $8,000 per month. R is the rate, now it's 4.4 .4 per annum, except we're looking at a monthly payment, so we divide that by 12. And here's our equation, where D the payment is equal to R the rate over 100 times the initial value, the principal. We enter in our values and we use the solve function on the TI Inspire calculator. We find the principal required to give us a monthly payment of $8,000 from the perpetuity is $2,181,818.18. So we can transfer that across to our future value. And then we can hold everything else constant that we've used before and work out the new interest rate for this new future value. And what we find is that Richard would require an interest rate of 6.028% per annum compounded fortnightly while saving in order to receive $8,000 a month when retired. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helped clarify a little bit about annuities and perpetuities. There are some definite similarities in how you use the finance solver. However, the main difference being an annuity eventually runs out. Your funds become depleted and you get to a zero balance or you close the account. Whereas a perpetuity, no matter how long it goes for, it will continue maintaining the balance the same at the end of each term as it had the previous term. The principle never reduces. Please practice these skills and it'll become second nature. Write your summaries, get on top of this terminology and finance maths is quite simple to follow. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.